Hello, everyone. It is Friday of launch week for my new book, The Art of Tapestry Weaving. Um, we made it to Friday. Yay. Uh, it is November 6, I think, today. Um, I've had a great week in terms of the book. We had some good launch things on Tuesday, and I'm doing another launch tomorrow, Saturday, and there is sign up um, room in that on my website under books. It says book launch. Um, my website is right below tapestryweaving.com. Anyway, this book um, is out in the world and I'm hearing from a lot of you that you are enjoying it. And so I thank you for that feedback. I'm glad that it seems uh, useful so far. That was my intention. So um, I wanted to just talk a little bit today about how I approached yarn in the book. I, um, yarn is a big subject. There is so much yarn to be had in the world, fortunately. Um, some of it is great for tapestry, some of it is not. So how you choose is what I am trying to teach you in chapter three of this book. Um, so yearning for yarn is the title of the chapter. So in this book, I used four anchor yarns and I took the concept of anchor yarns as um, a starting place. So you choose a yarn that you start with, you learn the techniques, you get used to this yarn and then you can learn to branch out and decide whether that yarn is the right one for you or if you want to try a different yarn. There are a lot of different things to consider in terms of yarn. For tapestry, of course, you want a firmer yarn. You don't want it to all compress in and become um, a little matted ball. You want a yarn that has some firmness to hold its structure, but a lot of us really want a lot of color choices. Unless you dye your own yarn, getting the colors you want can also be a challenge. So um, in the book, I have a page that has a chart of four anchor yarns that I'm suggesting. Depending on where you are in the world, you might choose a different anchor yarn. And I'm going to show you these samples that I wove for the book that uh, give you a little bit of, more of an idea of what the yarns are. So let me switch my camera and I'll show you those anchor yarns. Um, four samples, and there's a very large photo of this in the book near the back. I have chosen four yarns that are uh, Weaver's Bazaar, which is a yarn out of the UK. And this yarn comes in a vast number of colors. This particular one is 18.2, that's the size, it's quite thin. It comes in thicker yarn though, you can get a 9.5 over two, so it's a two ply yarn. Really firm, um, yarn it has sort of a shiny finish and you can get a lot of definition it's very crisp and of course with lots and lots of colors you can do a lot of color blending which is really fun so the other next yarn that i use this is the yarn if you've taken one of my beginning online classes um, I recommend starting with Harrisville Highland if you live in the United States this is a yarn that's pretty easy to get in the US and it's a worsted weight two ply yarn it only comes in 64 colors so this is actually a color that I dyed myself but it is um, it dyes really nicely if you're a dyer and it is a two ply yarn uh, worsted weight so it works really well at eight ends per inch and it's a little bit you can see if you compare these it's much fuzzier than the Weaver's Bazaar. These are um, probably the two yarns are the most different here is that the Weaver's Bazaar is very shiny and reflective and the Harrisville Highland is more matte and um, fuzzy. It's easy to work with though and it's easy to get. So that is why, why I use that Highland as one of my yarn choices. Uh, then I have um, a yarn that I use myself for my big tapestries is Harrisville Kohler Singles. It's a singles yarn that I bundle. So this is hand dyed and I mix um, three or more strands of this at eight ends per inch, three or four strands. 
But a yarn that is very similar to this is Faru. It's a Swedish yarn. The ball band looks like this. This um, is undyed, which I have put into a ball because I was making knit blanks with it to dye. Um, this is a great yarn. It's a little bit shinier than the Harrisville version, but they're almost, um, they're pretty identical, the two yarns. And this is some of that Faru woven up into a little sample. It's a little bit shinier than this Harrisville Highland. It has a little bit of Spelsau in it, and which is a long staple wool that gives it a little bit of shine. And again, it's thin, so you can use um, three or four strands at eight ends per inch. So that is a really great option. This is available all over the world. This yarn, um, I know you can get it in Europe and it's available all over the United States also. So it's a great choice. I think it only comes in, I could look because it says in my little chart here, um, it comes in 74 colors. So again, not a huge color choice, but it dyes beautifully and it's a great place to start if you're a new weaver. And then the last yarn is a beautiful yarn. It's a little different than the others. It is Freed. It's a Norwegian yarn from a small, way, a small mill in Norway. It is sold in the United States by um, Norsk Fjord Fibers. And it comes in 108 colors. It's a little bit thicker. Let me show you the... So here's the Faru. Let's see if you can see this. Versus the Freed in terms of size. There's a size comparison in the book also. Um, let's see if you can see this. So this is Weaver's Bazaar. It's the thinnest Faru. Freed is a little thicker than Faru, and Harrisville Highland is the thickest as a two-ply worsted. So this is also a two-ply, but it is much thinner than the worsted yarn, and I um, you can use uh, two, at least two strands at eight ends per inch and maybe more. It's a beautiful shiny yarn. It really looks gorgeous when woven. It has a little variation, so it has a lot of depth. And uh, it's just a really beautiful yarn. It, it's stiff enough for tapestry. It makes a really nice fabric, but it, it has a good hand. And um, I really, this is one of my... Um, favorite yarns. I don't use it a lot myself because I have such a big stash of the Harrisville Kohler Singles um, and it's a little bit thicker, but it's a really beautiful yarn for tapestry. So there are the four, um, there are the four yarns and these are described of course in more detail in the book, but um, I, uh, just wanted to talk about how I talked about yarn in the book. So that is a little start on that. I hope that you all are doing well. It's kind of a crazy week in the U.S. And um, it is, uh, we're just going to keep on going. We'll keep weaving, right? Um, Melissa says, congrats. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, Rukmini, I might be saying that wrong, I apologize, just ordered my book. Thank you so much. Um, I'm pretty happy about the book coming out and hopefully um, you'll find it at your local bookstore or you can order it from any number of places online. There are some suggestions on my website, which is tapestryweaving.com, under books. And um, if you happen to spot it in a bookstore somewhere, will you take a picture and send it to me? Because it's kind of fun to see the book um, out in a bookstore. I would love it. So have a great day, y'all. Have um, a wonderful time weaving. Happy Friday. If it's Friday where you are. Some of you are um, in other parts of the world. But thanks for um, listening, and I'll see you soon.